Let's continue our studies of the MySQL terminal monitor client. Now, if you are familiar, or you are a DBA already familiar with a graphical interface such as My Microsoft's SQL Enterprise Manager, bear with us. Eventually, we will look at the GUI front end. But just realize the power and the advantage to using a shell-based interface such as the MySQL terminal monitor. It's so lightweight, yet provides pretty much most of the power that you can get from or harness using a graphical package such as Microsoft's SQL or Oracle's Enterprise Manager or any other GUI for that matter. The shell is absolutely critical within a Linux environment and that's why we spend so much time focusing on it because once you've mastered the shell then using a GUI becomes pretty much a piece of cake. So we've logged in and we're still logged in as the anonymous user. Now we did mention that we want to show you how to connect as root and we do want to display the users who are defined on the system so that we can then move ahead and secure the user on the system. But how do we know who we're currently logged into the system as? Well there are many predefined functions that we can execute to determine things such as who we're, log we're logged in as and how much database storage is available and so on, system utilization, etc. So you're going to need to remember some of the functions and with repetitive use of course they'll become committed to long-term memory. Let's simply note to reveal currently logged in MySQL user execute the following. We want to execute select user followed by open and then close parentheses followed by a semicolon. So we want to execute this function within the MySQL terminal monitor. Let's try it. We'll control shift V to paste select user into the terminal monitor into the shell and after executing select user notice in standard MySQL fashion a column header is returned which shows that we executed the user function followed by the name of the user who's connected to the server. When you connect as a user who's anonymous the user who's currently logged in to the Linux system appears. So in other words it is substituted for the anonymous user. But rest assured that we are logged in as the anonymous user as we'll show you shortly when we select all of the users who are members of this particular system. We are in as anonymous and a show databases reveals as such. Another key feature of the terminal monitor is as follows. Similar to the bash shell, there is a command history and the command history is defined on a per user basis. So the user Linux CBT maintains a command history independent of a totally different user who logs into the system such as root. You can use the up and down arrows to access the command history. So let's note that as well. Note MySQL maintains a command history which we can access using arrow keys. This becomes important as you rely more heavily upon MySQL's terminal monitor for navigation. So select user reveals that we're logged in as a given user. There are other functions that are useful as well. Let's execute a show databases. We'll execute a select now for example, which is a function that returns the current timestamp. It's currently 06, 0208, 1756 it returns one row or it has returned one row in not enough time to be measured using the precision that's the default so there are other functions that we'll look at but we just want to as we go along sprinkle some here and there so that you get a sense for what's possible so we know that we're logged in as the anonymous user because our name Linux CBT who we're logged in currently as via the shell is the name that's substituted in for anonymous. But how do we confirm all of the users who are logged into the system? Well, since we are logged in as anonymous, we don't have access to the MySQL database where all users are stored on the system. So in order to access that database, we'll need to open a separate shell and connect to MySQL as root. 
In order to open a separate shell within a GNOME desktop environment, simply execute Control Shift T, and that gives us a new tab to operate with. From within this new tab, we can execute a totally separate or independent MySQL instance, and that's a client instance, connecting to the same backend MySQL daemon, since MySQL is a client server RDBMS. Let's execute MySQL. However, if we do so without specifying a username, notice that we have connected to the server again as the user Linux CBT or as anonymous. We can confirm as such by executing the select user function which is in the history. And we'll find it. And it might just be easy enough for us to type it. So let's execute that select user again followed by open and close parentheses. And again, we're in as Linux CBT. So we just want to drive home the point that unless you specify explicitly on the command line the dash U option followed by the name of the user who you intend to connect to the DBMS as, you will always log in as the currently logged in Linux shell user. And that user happens to be, if we execute who am I, a user called Linux CBT who gets substituted for the anonymous user when the user is not defined. Now you may be wondering, what if there was such a user defined as Linux CBT in the MySQL DBMS? Well then, the shell user, Linux CBT, would simply inherit all of the permissions granted to the Linux CBT user within MySQL. Otherwise, the user gets substituted or aliased as anonymous. So just keep that in mind. If the database has a user that matches the shell user, then the shell user will inherit all of the rights of the database user. Otherwise, the shell user essentially connects to the database as guest or anonymous, which has very li limited privileges. So that leads us up to the next part. How do we connect as a certain user? Simply execute MySQL, followed by the U option, dash U, followed by, and that's a lowercase u, the name of the user who you intend to connect as. We mentioned we'd like to connect as root, so we simply follow this up with ROOT, and this will connect us to the database as the user root with a brand new connection ID of 10 instead of 9. And now, when we execute select user, followed by open and close parentheses and then a close semicolon, you'll see that we're authentic we've authenticated to the database as the user root. Now this obviously means that if we execute some of the commands such as show databases and other commands, we should see more information. Let's attempt to execute show databases and you'll see that a new database that is not apparent to the anonymous user, MySQL, is now apparent to the root user. The root user is God within the DBMS, no differently than the root user is God within the Linux environment. But again, this brings up the simple fact that when you install MySQL for the very first time on any Linux, Nix, or Windows-based system, the root user account for the DBMS is wide open to any user who has local access to the system. Notice also that when we selected user using the select user function, it returned root at localhost. This means that the user is able to connect from the localhost and only from the localhost. Now we're going to prove as such by connecting to one of the systems in our network and then attempt to use the MySQL client from that remote system to connect back to our local system. So, in a separate shell using Control Shift T, let's SSH out as a user root. We'll connect to another box that we have on the network, the media box, which is located at 192.168.1.100. We'll have to accept the public key. This is the host's SSH key. And after typing in yes, the key will be stored in our known underscore hosts file. We'll then authenticate and momentarily we'll have a session on the remote system. There's another box in our network called Linux CBT Media 1. This is our dumping ground for all sorts of media, multimedia, images, videos, and so on. But it also happens to be a SUSE Linux box. In fact, the cat etc SUSE release reveals that it's also version 10 and it's also running MySQL. Let's execute MySQL and you'll see that it allows us to connect to it on the remote system. It's also running a version 5.0.1.8. But before we connect to the remote systems instance of MySQL, let's use the MySQL client from the remote system to connect, or at least attempt to connect, 
as a user root. Now we don't need to specify the dash u option because we are logged in as root to the remote system and that's indicated by the hash mark that you see here. But don't take my word for it. Simply execute a who am I and that tells us that we're logged in as root on the remote system. The MySQL client, similar to other Nix-based clients such as SSH, simply parse the currently logged in user. Who am I is a simple utility that tells you who you're currently logged in as, and clients such as MySQL and SSH simply strip this information and use it when submitting it to the back-end process or the server process. So there's really no need when logged in as a user called root to specify dash u followed by root. But there is no harm committed in specifying the user root. So let's simply attempt to log in to the remote system without specifying dash u followed by root. However, in order to avoid the MySQL client attempting to log in to the local system, which in this case is Linux CBT Media 1's MySQL DBMS, we will need to specify the dash H option. Now you don't need to memorize these options. If you e simply execute MySQL followed by help, and then followed by, we'll just grep for host, for example, you'll see that in order to connect to a remote system or in order to connect to any host, you simply use either dash H or the long format, which is also equivalent, but just takes a little more effort, dash dash host equals the name of the host. We prefer to use the short options because it saves on time. So let's execute MySQL followed by dash H followed by the IP address of the server where we're spending most of our time, Linux CBT DB1. Now if Linux CBT DB1 is not in the host file, we'll need to specify the IP address. You can confirm that by pinging. We'll send three packets to Linux CBT DB1. And if it doesn't come back, then the remote system doesn't know who Linux CBT DB1 is. But we can rectify this problem rather easily. By simply modifying, we'll use Pico to modify the hosts file on the remote system. If you have access to DNS within your environment, simply update the DNS and it serves a similar function. In this case, 192.168.1.50 is equivalent to Linux CBT DB1. Linux CBT. Internal, our made up mock domain. And we'll also specify the short name, which is usable. Now let's attempt to send three ICMP packets and notice the remote systems responding, which now means we can use the MySQL client followed by dash H, followed by Linux CBT DB1. And this will attempt to connect us as root to Linux CBT DB1, the primary DBMS box where we installed MySQL. Notice, host 192.168.1.100 is not allowed to connect to this MySQL server. What this tells us is the following. The client was able to talk to port 3306 to the server managing port 3306, but the server, which happens to be running on Linux CBT DB1, was unable to find a user called root at 192.168.1.100. And because the local MySQL instance was unable to locate a user called root at a given IP address or host name, but in this case it's IP address, access was denied, which tells us something interesting about the way MySQL handles authentication. So let's make a note or call this MySQL authentication notes. One is premised on username and host name i.e. root at local hosts. And optionally can be premised on simply a username such as root. But usually MySQL parses both the username as well as the host name. And this information is stored in the MySQL database. That's the database that's now apparent to us because we're logged in into the second window as a user root. It's actually stored in this database. If an incoming connection does not match one of the users on file or within the table structure, MySQL will deny access as we saw here. So although root's wide open and anonymous is wide open, access was denied. Now you may be wondering, from the remote system, could we log in as an anonymous user? Well, we'll simply execute a MySQL host Linux CBT DB1, and instead of specifying no user, we'll specify a user of, let's say, Linux CBT 
and let's see if it allows us to connect. Again, Linux CBT at 192.168.1.100 is not permitted. So what this tells us is the default MySQL instance, although not ultimately secure, has some level of security built in, which says that connections can only be made from the local host. So in its default state, connections can only be made from the, the local host. So in its default state, connections can only be made from the local host. Now with that said, next we'll move on to finally securing anonymous in root and tying up some loose ends. So we've spent a great deal of time yapping about the way MySQL security works, which we tend to do a lot. We tend to overstress how things work so that it sticks. At least this is the best way I find that I learn, which is to basically repeat the information as much as possible until it becomes ingrained. So we're learning slowly but surely how MySQL authentication works. It's premised primarily on username followed by hostname, which tells us that the default credentials table consists of accounts for anonymous and root, but that are tied specifically to the local host. And we know that or know this because we attempted to connect from a remote system using a MySQL client version 5, the same version, 5018, and we were unable to because we did not meet the exact criteria which includes two pieces of information, username as well as hostname, all independent of the local ETC password or local Linux database file which is ETC password. MySQL does not focus on the user accounts that are defined here. However, when logged into the shell, a username is available that the client, MySQL, can submit to a backend server, MySQL D. Super. And in fact, if we were to execute a set grep name, for example, you'll see that there are names defined. There's a host name, there's also a log name. There's also a username. All of these different variables can be parsed by clients such as SSH, MySQL, when attempting to resolve who the local user is. But we can obviate the need for any parsing by simply using the MySQL client, followed by the U option for username, followed by a user who you'd like to use, such as root at a given IP address, let's say 192.168.1.100, followed by the host name that you'd like to connect to. Now before we move into connecting using MySQL client from a remote system, let's shore up the security locally because we do have a major security problem. And that is in the second window here, we were able, and let's just exit this using backslash Q, and in this case it needs to be lowercase, we were able to connect to the local instance as root, who is considered to be the super user or SA equivalent for you Windows users, SQL Windows users that is, and we're able to connect as root without being prompted for authentication. So we need to tighten this all up. Now of course this is in the MySQL documentation, but seeing is believing, which is what we're attempting to show you here. So let's show you some of the different ways that we can tighten up security. Now there are primarily three ways we can tighten up security. The two easiest ways include using the MySQL admin program as well as using the set password feature within the MySQL terminal. So let's make some notes here or take some notes or record some notes. The three or there are three primary ways to secure user accounts we're going to focus on two ways. One is to use the MySQL admin program. So use, and we'll put it, the name of the program between single quotes. Use the MySQL admin program. That's one way. And you can use the MySQL admin program as any user. But of course, if you're a non-privileged user, you can only secure the account for the the credential that you have access to within MySQL. In other words, if you're logged in as Linux CBT and the server has already been secured, you cannot alter someone else's account, and rightfully so. The second common way of securing an account is to actually use MySQL terminal monitor 
and set password feature. This allows us to set the passwords for accounts that are defined. We're going to focus on these two ways. And there's also another way, which is to run an update query. But these are the two easy ways to do it. Built-in functions allow us to make these changes, either via MySQL admin or via the set password feature. So let's go to the shell and show you how to tighten up the most important account, which is the root account, first and foremost. Now, in order to do so, as we mentioned, there is an account or, or a program that is that allows you to update the account called MySQL Admin, amongst other things. MySQL Admin takes a few values or a few arguments, that is, when you use the password option followed by a few values. If we execute MySQL Admin password followed by the old password as well as the new password will be able to update the user's password. Now you may be wondering for whose password is this? Now similar to the MySQL client, the MySQL admin utility allows you to specify the dash lowercase u option to indicate the user who you'd like to focus on, as well as the host in which you intend to perform these changes. So we can use the MySQL admin program locally to make changes to a database such as on a different server, such as Linux CBT Media One. But for now, we're focusing locally. Now, in the initial case, both accounts, both anonymous and root accounts, are blank. And because they're blank, we don't need to specify the old password. So by simply executing a MySQL admin, followed by password as the option to MySQL admin, followed by a new password. Let's set a new password. We'll go with a simple password of ABC123. This is almost enough to suffice, but we do need to specify the user for which this is to apply. So in order to do so, we'll use the dash lowercase u option, followed by root. And although we're logged into the Linux shell as the user Linux CBT, which is a non-privileged account, we can update root because root currently has no password set. But once the password is set, we will then need to know the password in order to make changes to the account going forward. So let's just review that. MySQL admin followed by lowercase u followed by the name of the account that we'd like to affect followed by password which is the key option because there are many options that the MySQL admin program will take different things it can do such as flushing tables and privileges and shutting the server reloading the server pinging the server to see whether or not it's alive and so on followed by the password when we have set ABC123 as a password in order to affect changes going forward we'll then need to specify the old password followed by the new let's go ahead and specify this now notice everything seems to have run perfectly within a shell environment echoing the question mark variable will reveal whether or not the previously run program was successful in this case it was because a zero exit status was returned which within a Linux Unix Nix based environment means that all went well and we can move on to the next step well what is the next step the next step is to attempt to reconnect to the server as the root DBMS user without specifying a password as we've been able to do thus far. So let's clear screen and we will record in our notes what we ran to, to effect the change and we simply ran MySQL admin followed by lowercase u followed by root to effect the root user's account followed by password as the main option followed by our new password which is ABC123. Going forward we'll need to specify the old and the new. So this is all we did to make the password ABC123 which is a simple password but at least it's set. Now let's attempt to connect to the MySQL server instance using the client and when you do not specify the dash lowercase h option followed by a given host the client attempts to connect to the local MySQL daemon. Keep that in mind. Most of the clients that are included with the DBMS attempt to make connections locally rather than remotely when the host option is omitted. So we're going to connect as the user root. 
But look at what happens this time when we connect this root, or attempt to connect this root, because we've failed, so we haven't really established a socket. We failed. We established a, a socket indeed, but the server immediately terminated the connection because the password wasn't supplied. Well, access denied for root at localhost because we're not using a password. In its default setup, no password is specified for the user root or for the user anonymous and we're able to then connect as either user as any Linux based user on the system of course that's considered a security breach and we've made the necessary steps or at least taken one of the two necessary steps to tighten things up well how can we connect to the server now well we did mention that there's another key option that many of the MySQL client programs accept and that's the dash lowercase H option for localhost, but then there's one other option, the dash P option. So localhost is still fine, we want to connect locally, but the dash P option allows the client to accept or to prompt the user for a password, that is, to accept the password from a prompt. The reason why we want to prompt is, rather than specifying the password on the command line, is so that we don't reveal the password in the clear. So if there are any sh shoulder surfers in your vicinity, they don't see the password s directly on your screen. You could, however, specify dash P immediately followed by the, the password. In this case, that's ABC123. However, shoulder surfers can take advantage of the fact that you are revealing the password via your screen. So it's a good idea when authenticating to authenticate using dash P which tells the client to prompt for the password and to not echo the password to the screen. So let's do that. Now we're being prompted and when we type in ABC123 notice you don't even see any asterisks or stars or anything. And once we've connected we are assigned a new connection ID in this case that's 15 and we are connected to the server as root which we can confirm by executing a select user open close parentheses and a semicolon to close the statement now we're in as root and now we have tightened up security for the root user although the passwords not a tough password certainly if one were to run a brute force attack against the server the server would reveal or the brute force utility would reveal a password and the server would yield access relatively quickly but nonetheless the concept remains the same you can use or elect to use a tighter password now let's quit and attempt to connect again without being prompted we fail and if we echo the exit status when a program has failed it's usually a non-zero exit status in this case that exit status is a one Let's attempt to connect again as mentioned and this time using the dash P option followed immediately by what the password currently is set to which is ABC123 and notice that there are no spaces between the dash P and the ABC123 and this is really for parsing on behalf of the MySQL client since the client will be unable to tell whether or not a space is a part of the password so you're not able to specify dash P ABC123 but you are able to specify dash P immediately followed by the password in this case which happens to be ABC123 so let's attempt to connect and we're in voila no problems we can quit return to the shell and we're out of there now if we attempt to connect to the server as a non privileged user such as Linux CBT which really is just a way to connect as anonymous since it is a substitution or an alias for the anonymous account we can do so quite easily if we execute MySQL with no options whatsoever and then execute a select user which is in our history you'll see that MySQL has authenticated us as the anonymous user but the disadvantage of course is that we don't have access to the other database that's installed on the system and that's the key MySQL database we can execute a show databases just to confirm it one more time and you'll see that we can't see the MySQL database however if we quit and then reauthenticate as the root user but this time we'll prompt because we don't like to expose our password for occasional shoulder surfers and you should be security conscious wherever possible especially when dealing with databases now when we execute a select user you'll see that we're in as root which means if we execute a show databases we see all databases on the system super 
Now, what about this notion of securing the anonymous user so that users are forced to present proper credentials when authenticating to the system? Well, next, we secure anonymous, and once we've secured anonymous, only authorized users will be able to connect to our MySQL instance, which is precisely the intended effect. So let's move on with our securing of our MySQL instance to force users to authenticate before gaining access to the MySQL instance. This is ideally how you should set things up before releasing it to the masses. We've secured root, albeit with an insecure or a not tough or not so tough password, but the account's now secure. We do need to secure anonymous, however, because any user on our local system can connect to the server. We can prove it by adding yet another user to our local system. Let's exit, which is another way to quit the terminal monitor. We'll SU in to our local system. And once SU'd in, we'll run the SUSE utility that we love, YAS, yet another setup tool, which automates things or makes the administration of a Linux server very easy. Let's add yet another user. And we're going to call this particular user test. So we'll call this user test user. Test user 1. And we'll call this user test user 1 with a simple password. And we're doing this simply to illustrate that when we SSH into our local system as test user 1, we'll still gain anonymous access to the MySQL database instance. Now that this is out of the way, in a separate shell, we'll control shift T to open yet another window. Let's SSH as test user one into the local host by doing SSH or executing SSH space test user one at local host. We'll have to accept the public key because we've never SSH into this local system. It is a vanilla setup. And we'll need to authenticate. And once we've authenticated, we are now logged in as some new user that we've set up called test user one. A PWD reveals that we're in our home directory of test user one. So we are now a new user on the system. The YAS program has taken care of setting up bin documents, public underscore HTML, and all the other hidden files that are set up by default for users within our environment, including bash files and the like. So in this fourth shell window, we're logged in as test user one. If we execute MySQL, it will attempt to connect to the local instance. And voila, it logs us in as the anonymous user. And there is no history to cycle through. I'm currently moving the arrow key up and down. So there's nothing to go through to prove whether or not this user has logged in at any time. But we know the user hasn't because we've just created the user. So let's select user. And you'll see that we're logged in as test user one, which is really just an alias or a substitution for the anonymous user. So again, we're connected, which means any user you connect to this local system will have at least anonymous privileges to the database, which we need to turn off. So I think we've driven that pro point home quite a bit, and it should be stuck in your head that you need to secure root as well as securing the anonymous user. So two things you want to do, secure root and then secure the anonymous user. And we've mentioned that authentication is based on username at the host in its default state you can only connect from the local host and there are three primary ways to secure the accounts including using MySQL admin which we did for root but now we're going to be using the set password feature to do so for the anonymous user and we just want to mention as a note secure both root and anonymous accounts we'll mention this as much as possible because security is of the utmost importance when dealing with databases. Your MySQL instance may become the database that stores secret or top secret or confidential information for your organization. As a result, you should know how to administer it and protect access into it. Super. So let's quit this sec section here. We don't need to be logged in as test user one but we'll remain in test user one's shell so that once we've disabled the anonymous account we'll prove whether or not the different lower privileged Linux users can still gain access to the DBMS. Now it's time to set up anonymous's account in the way that we see fit. Now we have two ways of approaching this issue. We can set a password 
or we can entirely disable the anonymous account. Now, I prefer the latter, which is to disable the anonymous account, because generally speaking, access to DBMSs should be clear. We should be able to authenticate and identify users clearly, at least based on unique usernames and passwords. But in some rare instances, you may want to permit anonymous access. So how do we go about tightening up access for the anonymous user? Well, let's connect to the MySQL terminal monitor. Let's see who we're currently logged in as. Select user. Here's an instance where we're logged in as root, so there's no need to log in again. Now, there is a database, as we've mentioned, called MySQL. We don't need to rerun it again. Here it is. MySQL is the main database used by the MySQL daemon for managing the system. It includes a table called user. In order to list the contents of the, the, the database, we'll execute a use MySQL. And now the use command is one of those rare commands that doesn't require a semicolon, but you can still terminate with a semicolon, and it'll cause no harm. Once we execute a use command, which is a standard SQL command, which should work on any enterprise DBMS, we're now within the context of the MySQL database, which happens to be managed by MySQLD. What this now means is that if we execute a show tables, we will see tables that correspond directly to the MySQL database and to no other database, including columns, hosts, proc, and the important table of the moment, the user table. The user table contains entries for all the different users who are permitted access to the database or to the database management system and to what databases they're granted access to and so on. In order to see the currently defined users, and those are the two default users, root and anonymous, we'll execute a simple SQL query. Now, we are supposing or assuming that you have basic SQL skills to run queries such as select, update, insert, delete, and so on. If not, follow along. It's quite easy what we're doing anyway. In order to get information out of a standard SQL database, not a Microsoft SQL database or an Oracle SQL database or an IBM database, but a standard SQL compliant structured query language database, you'll need to run a select command. The syntax is quite simple. Select, you can select star, which is a wildcard, which will return all columns. So if your table has 50 columns and you select star, all 50 columns for each record will be returned. Or you can elect to return only specific columns. We'll execute a select star from the user table and show you what happens. Now let's purposely not specify the semicolon at the end to see what happens when we do. Notice the terminal monitor returns a greater than sign prefixed by a dash indicating that it's it's ready for more input if for some reason you are executing a query whether select update insert delete and the query exceeds the width of your terminal you can gain a new line by simply pressing enter and not using the semicolon which is why it's important to use a semicolon to instruct the terminal that you're complete or finished with a given statement in this case, we are finished, so we just want to execute by following up with a semicolon. So notice, we were able to execute the most recent command on two separate lines. One, then followed by a semicolon. This time, we purposely did two separate lines. Just to show you that MySQL will accept additional input, and then only when it sees the semicolon will it execute the command. It's similar to Enterprise Manager for Windows, for example, where you execute a command, but you block only the section that you want to run, or you don't run unless you type go, or so on. Or you execute, as mentioned, just the area that's blocked. But notice that the output's a bit messy, because there are many columns. Not too many rows, but there are many columns. In fact, there are only four rows two roots and two anonymous accounts which we'll explain briefly now we know the columns that we're interested in we're interested in the host column which correlates directly to the user account so we want to return the host column as well as the user column in order to return just the two columns that we're interested in we will rerun the query but instead of selecting star because star equates to all columns or is a wildcard or a synonym for all columns will select user comma host or host comma user either or it doesn't matter to us either way it just dictates the order in which the columns will be returned from the user table so we want 
the host as well as the user. Now, why do we want host as well as user? Well, user should be obvious. If we're attempting to tighten security for the anonymous account or attempting to display information for any accounts that are defined, and you're basing that on the fact that you know how MySQL parses user accounts or credentials, and it does so by and large by processing the left part of the at symbol like an email address and the right part. That's how it determines a unique identity. Username at a host. So that's why we want the host as well as the user. The right side of the at symbol represents the host and the left side represents the user. So when we select user comma host we're really returning the left side of the at symbol followed by the right side of the at symbol which is represented in the database by two separate columns but it's all one row so it's relational. So let's select user comma host from user and again since we're running a query we need to terminate the query with a semicolon within the MySQL terminal monitor but if we elect not to the MySQL terminal monitor waits for us for additional input because again queries could be pages long or it could be screens full and you may need separate lines to get your job done but we're done so we'll just execute a semicolon and notice now we have nice output and that output shows us that there are two accounts root at the host name which happens to be Linux CBT 1 or Linux CBT DB1 that is and root at localhost followed by blank or prefix with blank at Linux CBT DB1 followed by root at Linux CBT DB1 followed by blank at localhost followed by root at localhost let's just explain all of this Whenever you create user accounts within a MySQL environment, it's advised that you create two accounts. One account which corresponds to localhost in the event that you attempt to connect from the localhost because whenever you use clients such as MySQL or MySQL admin, they submit localhost when connecting from the localhost. And it's also advised that you create a user at a given host name because sometimes clients will submit a host name for example let's say we attempt using our client logged in as the Linux user root to connect to a remote systems DBMS using MySQL followed by H for host followed by 192.168.1.100 or Linux CBT media 1 the MySQL client will submit root at Linux CBT DB1 is attempting to connect to the remote systems instance. So you should define two accounts whenever setting up one single user. One for the local host in the event that the user attempts to connect locally and another when the user attempts to connect remotely. If for some reason your DBMS server will never ever accept connections from the local host then you can get away with defining a user only at a specific host and there are many examples of such configurations for example you may have a back-end DBMS which accepts connections from front-end web servers and those front-end connections will never be made from the DBMS box now back to our anonymous accounts the two anonymous accounts that are defined are blanks and this is where the substitution occurs when a non-privileged Linux or Nix based user logs into the MySQL DBMS instance so it's like a dynamic substitution so the blank accounts correlate to anonymous accounts let's list that note blank accounts in the MySQL DB user table are really anonymous accounts. That's very important to know. And this is where substitution occurs. This is where non-privileged Linux, Unix, Windows, MySQL substitution occurs super let's save our text file return to the shell and essentially although we didn't select the password column we want to either change a password for both anonymous accounts or disable these two anonymous accounts now we tell you there's a set password feature which allows us to make that happen that's what we're going to do now let's go ahead and make these changes in order to use a set password feature simply execute set space password space for and the general syntax is as follows 
first open a single quote, then close a single quote, followed by the at symbol, which is the delimiter between the left side and the right side, left side being the username, right side being the host name, followed by open single quote, followed by the name of the host. In this case, we will work on the anonymous account for the host name Linux CBT DB1 first. We'll specify Linux CBT DB1, followed by close quote, and then we'll set this equal to password, and we'll keep it all together. And what we're doing now is using the password function, which encrypts the password. And in between the parentheses, we will specify, and in between single quotes within the parentheses, not double quotes, we will specify the new password. It looks a little confusing, but once we get this working, we'll d explain the syntax. It's just understanding the syntax of the set password feature and of the password function. So let's set a new password for the anonymous user. We'll use the same ABC123 password for simplicity. Notice a query ran successfully, which is equivalent to an exit status within Nick's base environments of zero. Let's copy what we've just typed and paste it into our text file. And beneath the anonymous account, we'll specify the command that was used to make this happen. We use the set password feature for a given user. Now, this set password feature works for any user that's defined within the user database. The special case blank user is, again, the substitution for the anonymous user. So this is a special case account where you don't specify the name of the user, which indicates to MySQL that you mean, really, the anonymous account. The at symbol followed by, within single quotes, the host, in this case Linux CBT DB1 is the first account, followed by the password function and the new password. Now let's rerun the select user comma host from user, and you'll see that the users are still there. This doesn't tell us that the password has been changed. There is a separate column, however, in the user table responsible for storing passwords, and it's actually called password. Notice it's here, it's right after the user column, and if we select the password column in addition, so we'll get user followed by host followed by password from user terminated with a semicolon, you'll see that the root user has a password at localhost, the root user at Linux CBT DB1 does not, the anonymous user at Linux CBT DB1 does, and the anonymous user at localhost does not, which tells us that when we executed MySQL admin, we updated the password only for the root user at localhost, but not for the root user at Linux CBT DB1. So it would behoove us to change the passwords for all of the users. So we have two accounts left to update. And if we wanted to change the password using the MySQL admin utility for root at Linux CBT DB1, we'd simply specify using the dash U option root at Linux CBT DB1 so that MySQL knows exactly which account we mean or intend to update. But since we're within the terminal monitor, let's just navigate through our history and make the changes. Now notice the hashing algorithm that's used is identical because the string that you see here for the root user applies to the anonymous user indicating that they're the same password so it is reversible. Let's update the anonymous at localhost and you'll see and by the way you can go to the beginning of a line just like in the bash shell using control A you can go to the end of the line using control E. Now let's execute this command followed by select user host password and you'll see that three of the passwords have been updated or three of the accounts have been updated which leaves us with root at Linux CBT DB1 and this will be the first time where we actually specify the left hand side so we'll go with root at this time Linux CBT DB1 and we'll then select user comma host and so on from user now you'll see all four accounts have been updated both roots as well as both anonymous accounts have the same password ABC123 but it means that if a non-privileged user attempts to connect they'll be unable to do so. Now let's attempt to without flushing privileges from a separate shell so let's find a free shell that's open here's test user let's connect using MySQL and notice access is denied connecting as test user 1 at localhost we don't need to fresh flush the privileges when we've updated the anonymous passwords we only need to flush the privileges after we've deleted the anonymous users from the system so anonymous users are still defined
but when a user connects, such as test user one, the user will need to specify a password. In this case, the password is ABC123, and now we have access as the test user. So we can still get in as anonymous, and we can still show databases which will reveal the schema as well as the test database, but we'll now need to know the anonymous account's password. So you can feel free to share the anonymous account password with those folks who should have anonymous level access. Now we did mention you can delete altogether the anonymous account. It's quite easy. Simply delete from the user table where user equals blank, and then flush the privileges and the anonymous account would have vanished as a result. But we'll save that for another time. So as it stands, we have secured the server albeit not by much and the passwords aren't tough but again you'll need to know the password of ABC123 in order to connect as the root user or the anonymous user and you'll also need to connect as either root at localhost, root at Linux dbtdb one or ditto for the anonymous, the anonymous user. In other words, users from remote systems cannot currently connect to our local system. So next we're going to continue with user management and show you how to set up users to connect from remote systems.